Cry TV. Lie to the world. Ikra TV. Light to the world. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to People and Islam here on Ikra TV Africa. Subscribe, comment and share. Remember Ikra TV is a global channel that is aimed at promoting Islam all over the world. On People and Islam we give you uh, important personalities or people that who have done tremendous job in spreading Islam or Muslims who should be remembered. Uh, this time around we're going to look at the man who is whose history has not been outspoken or has not given to the world is Omar Ibn Said. Omar Ibn Said he was uh, one of the slaves that were taken from Africa to America. So, uh, but this guy was very, very tremendous in living a legacy in history. He left scripts that he was he wrote in Arabic uh, about his autobiography. And it's because many people have been saying that Muslims, we are not educated Muslims, we are, uh, have been undermined all along. But if you look at the history of uh, the Islam in America, uh, Omar Ibn Said is one of the people that stands out family. So Omar Ibn Said was 27 years old when he was taken from his West African home and transported to Carston, South Carolina as a slave in the uh, 1800. Now, he's one of the kind, uh, like his autobiography, uh, uh, outlived all the ages and left a lot that uh, li uh, made even his superiors or the masters uh, puzzled, wondering how this man who was a slave could write, how he could uh Right, because he, he, this guy, Ibn Said, was a wealthy Muslim who was a scholar. But due to the slave trade, he was captured from West Africa and forced into slavery in the U.S. And then when he went to the U.S. as a slave, he could get maybe some time after he had done the work and he could write. So he wrote a manuscript in Arabic, which he was... Uh, uh, w w like left over for years and then was later discovered. So Ibn Said uh, as a 27 year old w was taken from uh, Africa in 1807. That's around the uh, 19th century. So uh, he was from Futa Turo, Senegal. Then it said that uh, he was taken into the United States as a slave, as I have told you, and then was put in a prison cells. So uh, a story shows that he was captured in 1807 and then enslaved after a military conflict that was taken. That, were, that had happened in Senegal as they were taking them as that, as slaves. So he was taken across the Atlantic Ocean to Charleston. Uh, then just around a month before he, the U.S. legally abolished slave trade. So uh, as the slave trade was coming to an end, then it's the, by this time that uh, Omar Ibn Said was taken, to, into slavery. So he was a Flani. Flani is a, 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 a tribe in Senegal. Uh, 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 history shows that he, uh, Omar Ibn Said was a wealthy African and he came from a wealthy family. So this had given him access to be able to read the Quran. He was taught the Quran and he, the teaching of Islam for 25 years under the tutelage of his brother and two other teachers. So one of his brothers taught him Islam. Then when he was taken to America, uh, by, he was bought by uh, an old man called Johnson, 
who mistreated him. So when he was mistreated by his uh, slave master, he escaped from the, the slave master and he went to, to like after a few months later, uh, after being with uh, the Johnson, who was a brutal slave master, uh, Omar Ibn Said was able to escape and go. But unfortunately, when he escaped, he was caught. So when he was caught, he was he ended up being uh, taken back into slavery again and was bought by Fayetteville, who was in uh, another slave master after like three months after he was what recaptured so but during this period as he was in prison he wrote arabic scriptures on the walls using uh charcoal ashes so if you know charcoal if you 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 put it you can write like chalk so when he wrote because they they didn't know who was writing so the the his slave master fayette uh, wanted to know who was writing this because these guys knew english or american english and as, as you can say it but this guy uh omar ibn said was writing uh, uh arabic so he could go on writing Arabic on the walls, and then these people couldn't be able to read, but they could know, they could see that someone was what uh, writing this. So this drew the attention of the owners of the prominent family in New York City at the time, who bought him and took him to their land. So this uh, fight, because when he was captured, he was taken to prison. So like a prison by that time was like a market so it's a market where they come and buy you so when this guy came we found this guy who was writing and he developed interest to buy him so when he 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 was bought by by fayetteville he was enslaved and then as he went there, he, he wrote a 42 pages manuscript uh, about his autobiography, but he wa it was written in English. See, but you know, these white people are good at keeping history. So this manuscript was kept safely and was later sold to one of the... The, the libraries and this autobiography has been able to be converted lately into English and then tra translated and then uh, kept scanned and make different copies that are stored in the different libraries uh, in America. So this is what makes Omar Ibn Said a very influential person because many of the slaves were uh, perceived to be ignorant. That, but here we sing Omar Ibn Said, who is a Muslim, but who was educated, who was civilized, and who could write and read. Though being civilized doesn't mean that you have to read in English. He could read Arabic and could write. Uh, there is a transcript, I say, whereby people don't know where uh, Ibn Said was able to convert to Christianity or attend Bible lessons, but according to the 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 the, 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 the manuscripts that he left, he remained a Muslim. Because even in the book, he starts off with writing a sula in the uh, a sula from the Quran, Sulat al mulk from the Quran, where he directly challenges the concept of slavery. So he was like, why, why, like you people can have power over fellow humans and keep them imprisoned like this? So, so his conversion, because there are people claim that he was later forced to convert from Christianity to, from Islam to Christianity, but from the manuscript, it is seen that Omar ibn Said remained a Muslim. Though whereby he maybe have failed to go, to do the daily practice like fasting and doing the um, five prayers because of the situation that he was in. But from his writing, you, you can see that he made the 
he remained a Muslim by the mere fact that he started with the quotation of a sula in the Quran in his manuscript. Mm. So it's believed that he, he wrote this manuscript in Arabic in the year 1831. So this is a big legacy left by a, an African Muslim who had been taken to slavery. Then when we look at the, the, his legacy, uh, it is remembered that by he, Ibn Said, Omar Ibn Said, has a mosque in New York City that is named after him, which is Masjid Omar Ibn Said. So, which is a big monumental uh, project that can be made to remember the man so, uh, who is a Muslim American slave who left there. Then he went to uh, persecution, he went to uh, slavery, he went to he suffered all the things. But what we have to know is that. Uh, at least it can be evidenced that they are Muslims who were educated, who were civilized, who were able to read and write that we are soft, forced into slavery, who are part of the American history that everyone can know. So you can access the Omar Ibn Said book. On online, it is available. You can read and go and learn more about Omar Ibn Said. Uh, we'll be bringing you more influential people here on Ikra TV or people who have been able to leave a lasting legacy that benefited both them personally, that benefited their family and benefited Islam on uh, people and Islam on Ikra TV so subscribe Ikla TV Africa on YouTube channel and then you'll be able to get more, more of these stories, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Ikra TV, light to the world. Ikra TV, light to the world.